Hey everybody, welcome back. Alex here. Now, .NET 6 was just announced and here's Richard Lander with another ungodly long blog post. How long does a blog post like this take to write? It would take me like a year to write something like this. On November 8th, he wrote this. Hopefully he has some help doing this. Anyway, this is the announcement that .NET 6 is the fastest .NET 6 yet. I ran a few .NET tests. I compared .NET 5 with .NET 6. Uh, this was before the official release, so a few months ago. You might have seen those videos. And today, I'm excited to try this out, and I want to see if it's faster and by how much. I'm going to compare it to .NET 5, and it's going to be on my Intel machine versus the new MacBook Pro, which is an M1 Max machine. So yeah, I'm comparing apples to eggs, oranges to grapes. I know you're going to say something like that in the comments, but <laughs> I want to get a baseline here because this is the machine that I used, the Intel machine, in those videos. So we, we saw that, we know the speeds of that. It's a known if you've seen the videos, but I'm also gonna review that with you. And we're gonna see how much better it is on .NET 6 and how much better it is on the new Apple Silicon machines because there was a lot of focus on getting this to run on ARM and getting it to run on ARM well. As you can see in the very first paragraph, Richard says Apple Silicon is supported natively. That's pretty cool. If I do a search for ARM here, let's see, we got 57 hits ARM on this uh, on this blog post. Wow, this is cool. All right, I'm pretty excited. ARM, 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 ARM. <laughs> Very cool. Okay. Oh, there's even a tool that you can run that'll let you know what you're running on. So I installed Visual Studio for Mac on both of these machines, and that automatically installs .NET. But if you want .NET without Visual Studio, you can do that. You can just download the uh, runtime by itself, and you can run it through the CLI. You can use VS Code for doing uh, your coding and your project organization and so on. But I figured Visual Studio, why not? I'm going to install it anyway. So let's go over what I'm testing. I'm going to do two tests. One is going to be a single threaded test, which is going to be this right here. We're going to use the cryptography namespace to generate some RSA crypto things. I forgot what this test does. It does a lot of work behind the scenes to generate tokens, I think. Anyway, <laughs> that's not important. It's a lot of work, very difficult work, and it's single threaded. And then I'm going to execute another test, which is going to be testing multi threaded. So we're going to do some parallelism and see how much faster that's going to be. We're going to compare those and we're going to have both of those tests done. Since I did my test on this Intel machine, I actually didn't uh, do anything to it. So I called it .NET back when I did the test, which is fine. I don't care what it's called. I open this up in Visual Studio 2019 for Mac Community Edition. And by the way, um, Martin Merkin is the one that uh, turned me on to this test right here. He's been using .NET on his M1 since uh, the beginning of the year and he's pretty happy with it. He's been on .NET 5 and now he's on .NET 6. And here are some of his results. He's consistently be getting 47 seconds on his M1 using .NET 6 for ARM. Now compare it to the i9, which was about 57 seconds for this test and the M1 at 60 seconds before .NET 6. So with .NET 5 using Rosetta. So a significant improvement, a big improvement. Here's the code for that. And using C Sharp 10, you can actually just uh, not even have main method anymore. You can just have your code in your program just like that now. So that's pretty cool. Let's do that. Uh, this is my next test, which I'm going to rename right now because I don't want to run it. We'll run that next. So how would I run this? Well, I have 100 million iterations here and I want to build this project in release mode. So I'm going to switch this to release from debug. I've already done that. So we want to build a DLL. So I'm going to right click on this, publish, publish the folder, pub slash. I think I may have changed too many variables here. And I believe that this is not on C sharp 10 yet. I believe that this is C sharp nine and that's why it's giving me an error. So let's try the old way where I have a namespace and a class and a static void main, but the code inside is exactly the same. And when it's done, I'll just say all done publish now to folder. There we go. So that created a folder called pub. And if we go into that folder, you'll see that we have .NET .dll. Okay. And the way we execute it is just .NET .NET .dll. 
And I can also time it using the time command in the beginning. So let's do that. That's gonna execute. I'm gonna set this one up now. And I wanna make sure the code is exactly the same. So even though C Sharp 10 can use uh, inline code without functions, I'm not gonna do that. I wanna make sure they're the same. Ah, there goes those famous Intel fans. By the way, while it's running, let's take a look at the activity monitor here. There's .NET and it is running on one CPU, 99%. All right. And this one I called crypto instead of .NET, which is a better name, I think. So let's go to release mode, right click on that one and publish to folder. Also pub slash publish. So remember folks, this is the Intel machine, Intel MacBook Pro, specs are in the description. And this one is running .NET 5. If I do .NET here version, you'll see it's five. And by the way, it finished in one minute, 17 seconds. And here we've got .NET version six. So let's go to the pub folder, .NET crypto.dll, and I'm gonna time it. Boom, let's take a look at activity monitor while I still have a chance, because this is probably gonna be fast. There it is, one CPU, 100% of that, and the kind is Apple. So that means it's not running through Rosetta anymore, like it did on my earlier M1 test. All native. I'm really curious, I haven't actually done this, so I don't know how long this is gonna be. Okay, 48 seconds. So it's good. It's significantly faster, of course, but this is a M1 Max machine. It's a significantly more expensive machine than the M1 MacBook Air that Martin was using. And he's getting 47 seconds. Mine is a little bit slower by one second. And that is because the CPU cores are pretty much the same on these new machines that they were on the M1s. And this is running on one core, therefore you're not gonna see a huge improvement in that area. So the .NET 6 running on ARM is significantly faster, but we're not getting that much benefit from running it on the M1 Max MacBook Pro over an M1 MacBook Air. Now let's try the parallel test. To do that, I'm gonna rename this file and I'm gonna get this other file back to program.cs. This other file, the one that's program.cs now, this one has our parallel test. So it does actually two tests. And this one is a little bit more approachable. It's not doing some cryptography stuff. All it's doing is getting prime numbers. Should have done this test in the first place. It's calculating prime numbers from the range of zero to the limit when I set the limit here. So I set it to 50 million here. That's probably a good range. First, what it's gonna do is get the prime list right here. It's gonna start a stopwatch before that and stop it afterwards. Here is that function that gets the prime list right here. And it's using the is prime function to determine, um, I'm calling these functions. I'm so used to working with JavaScript. These are methods, of course, in C sharp. But um, here's is prime. And that figures out whether the number is prime or not. So a pretty simple test. Now here is the method that does it in parallel. So it takes in the list of numbers and it uses the parallel, uh, the system.threading.test.parallel class to do a for each loop. And this is a simple way of running a parallel task, calling the same exact is prime method on each number. So it's gonna run the single core test and then the multi-core test right after that. And then it's gonna print out the results for the total time of each test. Okay, first we're gonna do this on the Intel machine using .NET 5. I'm just gonna remove the pub folder just to make sure everything is nice and clean. Release and .NET publish, publish to folder. Let's go to pub again and publish. There we go. Time. Do I need time? I don't need time because it's going to spit out the time. So dot net <laughs> dot net dot DLL. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I need to go to the pub directory dot net dot net dot DLL. Let's go. While that's running, I'm going to set up this machine and I'm going to do the exact same thing here. So my limit was set to 100 million here, but I'm gonna change this to 50, so they're the same. And the rest of this is exactly the same code. All right, switch it to release and let's publish it. Boom, done. And there is my crypto DLL.net, crypto.dll, and let's go. Now I have my results from the Intel machine and wow, <laughs> wow, this is a huge, huge, Improvement, folks. Wow. Okay, here are the results. Ready? On the Intel machine, 
for the single core operation, it's 34 seconds. That's a long time. For the parallel execution, the multi-core test, is 3.8 seconds. So it's 10 times faster, almost 10 times faster to do this in parallel than in single core. This is a pretty good bump already. Now, let's go to the uh, .NET 6 on the new machine, on the M1 Max. Ready? For the total single core operation, it's 11 seconds. And the multi-core operation, 1.8 seconds. Huge. Well, there you go, folks. It looks like we do have a pretty big improvement in .NET 6. I'm pretty happy about that, and I'm sure some of you are as well. And if you are, give this video a like. Or if you found this useful or entertaining in some way, also give it a like. See, I even have an injury from doing this test. No, just kidding. <laughs> Subscribe for more content like this in the future. And thanks for coming. I'll see you next time.